Hello and welcome to the second video in the One Click Edit uh, series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to, to uh, basically download or uh, download the plugin and, and load it. And we're going to prepare the page to work and we're going to instantiate the plugin. So let's get going. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, go ahead and navigate to bitbucket.org forward slash parham curtis forward slash one click edit and click on source now if you're familiar with git you can clone it you can do whatever you want you could you know but I'm just gonna go to the source code here and I'm gonna grab all oops let's just let's see here. grab all this and I'm gonna copy it and then in my editor, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to put it in my JavaScript folder here. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it one click edit.js. And I'm just going to paste that source code right in there. Uh, again, that's I usually use you know Git, but I don't want to get into Git right now. So if you don't know what that is, um, you could just copy the source code, create your own file, and boom, there you go. So now you have the source code. It's not very complex. You guys can look at it. Like I said, it's open source. Use it. Do whatever you want with it. I don't care. Um, but uh, I will help you out if you want help. So here we go. Um, I have this weird little contacts table, and I've, you know, I got a little table set up my database I'm using PHP on the back end and let's go ahead and use it so in the header of my file I'm gonna make sure you have jQuery I, I have a CDN loaded here I usually don't do that but you know you can get some cool benefits of using CDNs it this needs to be loaded after after jQuery because this is a jQuery plugin so to do that I'm just gonna go below my script tag that's loading my jQuery and I'm gonna, if I can spell, go ahead and put in JS one click edit dot JS. All right, and let's go ahead and just make sure that loads. Refresh the page here. There we go. I have some old messages here. My internet connection keeps going out, so we hope it stays with us. So now that's included, we can use it. Um, before we use it, let's just go ahead and talk about what we want to do here. I have a table set up, and I'm looping through all my contacts here. And I have all, each row has the first name, last name, email, cell phone, and home phone. And I want everything but that ID right here to be editable. I just want to click on it edit and so let's show you how to do that uh, what I'm gonna do though is I am gonna wrap this in a paragraph tag so um, oops. wrap this all on a paragraph tag and we'll put on the closings closing paragraph so to make this work um, it shouldn't look any different really. I refresh the page here, looks the same. Um, but inside this, we need to give it some HTML attributes. And for one click edit, uh, the way I have this set up is you need a data ID attribute. You'll need a data field attribute. And you don't need it, but you need an input type. So there's two different types. It can just be input or it can be text area. So I'm going to go ahead and just set all those um, because by default it's going to use text area and I don't want to use multi-line stuff inside my table here. So I'm going to set all those. Um, and then we also, because this is jQuery, I want some way to target these. So I'm just going to give it a class as well. And I'm going to give these a class of um, just say one click edit and then each row is going to have the same data ID 
So I'm just going to echo out um, contact ID there. So that's going to put my ID for each row in that attribute. And for all of these, the data input will be the same of input. Now these could be input or they could be text area. Okay, text area is multi-line and it's, it replaces it with the text area. And then data field here. Um, and you know what I just realized? I, <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do the, the uh, ID, so yeah, I'm going to get rid of all of this <laughs> for my ID. But I'll keep it for everything else. So this one, uh, my field in my database, this is the actual column name. This uh, F name, L name. No. These match up with my database columns. Okay, so they have to be named the same way. So we'll do email, cell, phone, and home. All right, that's all it. That's all of the um, changes I need to make to the HTML for this to work. Um, so let's go ahead now and instantiate the plugin and make it work. So actually, first though. Let's go ahead and inspect this. If you look, here it is. I have my uh, class. My ID is populated. Field name is set to the name of the database field. And the uh, input is input. So uh, the other thing actually, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we need. So after this is loaded, I can put it in an on ready event uh, when the page is loaded, whatever I want to do. I'm gonna just gonna stick it down here, right around here. Um, and it's jQuery, so with dollar sign, and I'm targeting that class. So target it just like you do with jQuery, and it was one click edit class, and then uh, the method name is one click edit. Okay, so this gets two parameters. First parameter is it gets options. And then the second parameter is the success function. Uh, we're not gonna use that right now, we'll only use options. And the only option you need is the URL to the parser file that this is gonna post the information to when it's changed. So, um, that is just URL, and I'm going to pass, uh, let's see, it's parser.php is the name of my PHP parser file. So that is that. Um, if you guys want to stick around later, I can show you that parser file and how I'm actually doing this on the back end. But pretty much this, is, this just needs to be an endpoint in your application for information to be posted to. So let's go ahead and refresh now. And let's see if this works. If I click on uh, the network tab, I'm just going to go ahead and preserve the log. If I hover over these, it gives me feedback now uh, of a little gray outline. And if I click on it, I can change. It turns it into an input and focuses it. I could change it, click off of it, and when I do, um, the parser file uh, or the um, AJAX call fires off. And we get a status of 200 because I got my URL correct. And if I click that in the headers, scroll down, you can see that the form data is, is the data attributes we set in the, the HTML. So we have the ID of 18, field, uh, F name, and the value is the new value that we've updated. So if I change that back and click on it, it sends the new value there. If I click on it and don't change it, uh, and just click off of it, it doesn't fire off an Ajax call. So that's it. I mean, that this is working now. Um, that's all you had to do is add a few uh, HTML data attributes to your HTML element, figure out a way to target it. I targeted these all at once and instantiated uh, the plugin all at one time on a loop, but you could uh, absolutely instantiate these, all, any of these elements you want. This one up here as well, I added that earlier. Um, you could, you know, you, you, you could do whatever you want with it. You know, if you want to do each, each element separate, that's totally fine.
Uh, in the next video, what I'm going to do is show you how to um, pass your success function so that when the Ajax call uh, it has success, you can actually do something with it other than, you know, if, if you need to handle some JavaScript or jQuery on, on the callback. So I uh, hope that's useful to you guys, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and share the plugin, uh, the URL with people. Again, that's uh, bitbucket.org forward slash Parham Curtis forward slash one click edit. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.